Hello, hockey fans of all ages, shapes, and sizes. Shout out to my Uncle Darren for the Texas A&M uh, Aggies. Uh, love this shirt. Uh, shout out Pavs, Joel Pavelski in Dallas. Shout out Sonic Foster. What's up? Um, was chatting to her uh, or with her about her cooking show. Uh, she's out of Dallas, I believe, um, and Miami too. Anyways, um, wanted to... Talk about the Zadorov rhetoric. I think it's a bit ridiculous. The Leafs have 60 uh, Gs, uh, which is some people's annual salary. That's nothing in the NHL uh, for the players and the talent that they have there. So um, they're going to have to talk about moving a guy like Marner if they want to get uh, Zadorov and Hannafin or... Uh, Tanev or two of those guys and any combo I think you got to talk about Ship and Marner's contract um, if I'm the Leafs management I'm tickled pink that uh, Austin Matthews re-signed in the organization I did a lot of uh, trade speculation it was kind of fun this summer you know like with the young superstar Logan Cooley be on his way from Arizona um, uh, or would uh, you know like Keller and a couple of these guys, um, B for Matthews, um, who knew, but, um, I'm very happy if I'm the Leafs, uh, signing him at 13.3 mil. I think he's, if he stays with the Leafs and he has good guys around him, I truly believe, as I said in another pod that, uh, he will beat, uh, Ovechkin and he'll beat Gretzky's record in about 10 years. Um, I checked out his pace, uh, per games, goals per game so far in his career, and he's on pace for, uh, 856. Now, I think um, Gretzky retired early. Like, Gretzky's the GOAT no matter what, but um, I know he's such a humble am ambassador for the game, and he loves, you know, the, the talk and meeting all the players, all the, you know, guys coming in and mentoring them. Like, um, the guy's the great one for a reason, right? Um, I tried his wine, too, the other day from Gretzky Estates. It was awesome. Uh, Cab Franc. Um, anyways, I, uh, I think there's a bit of um, interesting talk about the overtime. My take on it would be like a reverse offside kind of thing where uh, you enter the um, offensive zone and it's almost like when you play like half court hockey, um, ball hockey or something when you're a kid and or like half court basketball kind of thing. You have to kind of um, uh, like... Um, go back and regroup uh i think um some kind of zone infraction or whatever like if you try to regroup and you're an offensive person going backwards over the blue line the uh the refs will blow the whistle dead uh play dead and um yeah you'll uh you'll reset and you can change your lines or whatever and and uh start over for a new possession so I think that might handle it. Um, I did talk uh, earlier, cast I believe, about uh, the timing of a trade. Like, for example, if you're going to trade like a guy like Marner for a couple D, um, um, and like uh, get Calgary kind of while they they need to regroup and make the playoffs, I think you want to do it before Christmas, or I guess in be probably after Christmas or in between the All Star break. Uh, the game is in Toronto this year, which is, uh, I think, another positive omen for the Stanley Cup odds. Um, I think everybody who has seen a few of my episodes, um, the Leafs are one of my favorites in the East. Uh, probably the Devils, too, selfishly for the Sharks picks. Um, I think they're, uh, they're an absolute wagon as well, too. So I still think uh, Vegas has a great chance of repeating. Um, I don't know about Colorado, like maybe they can pull it together, but they seem to be really hurting with, uh, without some of their key guys. And, um, I, I know it was early in the year, but, uh, Blackwood stood on his head, uh, in San Jose and, and of course McCarr scored like with a minute to go with their, their goalie pulled, et cetera. Um, in order to, uh, tie it up and then win in overtime, that was the Sharks, uh, lone point until they beat, uh, um, the Flyers and then the Oilers back to back, but hey, uh, I gotta say I called it. Um, not that I wish any ill will towards uh, Jay Woodcroft, but um, I kind of thought that would happen. Uh, that they needed a new voice in the room. So um, Oilers are on a, I think it's a three game winning streak now. So since that happened, so yeah, I mean it's uh, it's honestly probably not his fault. But if he's lost the room, uh, guys aren't listening to him, then you know, it is what it is, right? Um, the coach is often the, uh, the first to get the hammer drop. Um, 
the last thing I would say is, uh, yeah, like, um, around the timing, et cetera, of some of these guys to be traded. Like I, I do believe that if you want to acquire defensemen at the trade at the deadline, um, you're probably uh, better off doing that. Uh, like you could do that at the deadline. If you're going to trade forwards, they take a little bit more time to build chemistry with lines and line jumbling and stuff. You really want to do that mid season. So, um, I know the Sharks acquired a, a defenseman for, for picks. That's kind of a different scenario. Um, you can pretty much, my opinion is like being a defenseman and then, um, playing beer league and stuff and playing forward, just having fun, scoring more goals than, uh, um, eating pucks, uh, I guess, um, yeah, I would say you could trade a defenseman any time of the year and have no problems, but, uh, the forwards, you really want to trade them. Like I said before the all-star break or it's really dicey at the deadline. Like a few guys, Gus Nyquist really fit in in San Jose that one year. Um, a few other guys have done it, but you know, like, uh, um, Felino, you know, they, they traded, um, uh, for at the, at the deadline in Toronto and, and Ryan O'Reilly, like some people it's debatable if he worked out or if he didn't, I guess, um, the cynical Leaf fans will say, ah, oh, you know, good riddance. But, um, I thought he had an, a crucial goal in the playoffs that got them over the hump and got them that first, uh, first round victory, which is a confidence builder, obviously for the team, uh, chemistry and kind of that winning culture that Boston and Tampa seem to have all the time. Like, um, I just, uh, the comment of Sammy saying, oh, Tampa's in, in my head, like, well, pal, you're not getting any other start against Tampa this year. <laughs> and, and God forbid that wall, uh, the brick wall drops because you're going to get thrown in there into the gauntlet. So, um, yeah, I, I know c competitive sports is a lot between the ears and, um, you gotta, you know, you gotta be there mentally. Um, mental health is a huge thing for athletes. And, um, I think sports psychology and, and having winners, um, you know, I've, I've talked about mess and some of the other broadcasters, like these guys are winners, the multiple Stanley cups and those kind of guys don't grow on trees. So you, you want to grab guys like that. Um, like, uh, Jan Ruda, who's won a couple cups, uh, he's now in San Jose. Hopefully he'll stick around and be a core uh, piece of that defensive uh, core going forward. And I think the Sharks are doing good uh, acquiring kind of way more defense uh, than they they probably need right now. And that eek, that Vlasic contract is uh, so brutal. Like um, your jersey's going to be retired, man. Like uh, 44 is going in the rap uh, rafters at the, the tank um, eventually. Uh, so no worries there, but that contract looks really bad. Um, I'm super impressed with, uh, uh, Nikita Ohochuk. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, he's snapping really sharp passes like Carl used to do. I remember some guys saying like, I didn't even think Carl could hit me with that pass. And, uh, he would always shoot lasers at guys. And I know it takes a confident guy to do that. And, um, I like the physical presence of Ohochuk and, the hitting and um, those him snapping those passes really fast uh, shows a lot of confidence and you know uh, you don't want to be uh, loft and pizzas up the middle like uh, Kipper says. <laughs> I uh, I love you Kipper, but I disagree on your take on Geo. I think that guy's a true leader. Um, lots of heart in there, and um, I don't know. I I guess it doesn't really make sense to make him the captain, but if he's a big voice in the room. Um, you know, Tavares is a very humble guy. He's always led by example. And I think, you know, the more I think about it stripped in the captaincy from him was a very, um, dramatic take. I think if they lost those games against Calgary and Vancouver, uh, they might've faced something like Edmonton did like a, a moral crisis, but I think he's safe and, uh, he's, he's just leads by example. He's, He's always been a um, a minutes eater and a point getter and um, a loyal guy. So you can't buy that a lot, uh, loyalty um, to a franchise. I think, um, you know, when you think of all these trade pieces out there, you got Fraser Minton, who I think could go for Logan Couture. That's a hot take that I have. Um, but uh, if, if the Leafs want to acquire like a third line depth guy, I know Domi's there right now, but... Who knows how the the lines will go up and down and jumble around, but um, yeah, like I think uh, when uh, Cap Clutch comes back, we'll probably start winning in San Jose, uh, especially if he's got Bar uh, Barabanov. Wouldn't that be crazy if both uh, Couture and Barabanov got traded? Like Barabanov went back to Toronto, <laughs> but um, anyways, uh, 
yeah, trade pieces like uh, will Nick Robertson go? Will you know? Like I think these are guys that you've been waiting in the organization, and you if you're the Leafs, you can't keep trading away your futures uh, forever because you'll face eventually like all your guys want big money contracts. So I've said this like a million times through the summer. Um, the core four, or the core. Uh, the core five, whatever, um, one or two or more of these guys eventually has to uh, go or, or make less. And last time I checked, you can't demote somebody in salary. So Marner's getting 10-5. Uh, do you want to keep Nylander? If I'm the Leafs, I really want to keep this guy. Uh, if not, come on over to the Sharks, buddy. Uh, I'm sure they'll pay you t 11 on the open market, 11 mil or whatever, um, 10 mil plus for sure. Um, if the Leafs don't sign you and it goes past um, our, I think he's a UFA, maybe RFA, but um, yeah, if, if the Leafs can't get it done, like I said, they got 60 G's in cap space. Where do you get this money from? You got to ship out a big contract. So you're not doing Matthews. Um, you probably want to keep Nylander for the playoffs in the Stanley Cup run. So like maybe he goes to San Jose in the off season or somewhere else where, you know, he can make his salary and be, be a bigger voice in the room. Um, cause you got, it's just for Nylander, it's just, um, I call it a shit sandwich for timing because, um, it's, you got two years, uh, with both Marner and Tavares of like humongous contracts. So you're just at this point, you're, you're playing your lights out. You're like third in the league and scoring. You're over in Sweden, having a, a good old time eating Swedish meatballs, going to Ikea and whatever. And with your, your guys and your, you know, you're laughing it up because you're, they're going to be backing up the Brinks truck for you next year somewhere. So, um, enjoy it while you got it. And I think, um, it's no slight against Nylander if the Leafs can't keep them. They just, you, at some point this core has to break because you can't continue to, you know, pay these, uh, superstars or have too many superstars on your team. So you look at Vegas's model, they stockpile on defense they got a couple superstars up front, you know, a bunch of guys who play above their pay grade, um, like those middle guys, like a, a Barbashev. I, I hated when he hit Hurdle or somebody uh, and he knocked them out of the series. Like they kicked the crap out of San Jose that one year to go on to the final and win it. I thought that was San Jose's year with Carl. Um, you know, it is what it is, right? It's a competitive league. There's a lot of parity. You look at your trade pieces, you know, Easton Cowan, Fraser Minton, you know, like, do you want these guys to come up? Like, what if you lose, start losing your core pieces and you go into a retool or a rebuild? So these are all the things that the Leafs need to consider. And I think, honestly, if I think uh, of playoffs, like you want to keep your Bertuzzi's, your Domi's, et cetera, that's why they brought him in. Um, maybe Marner, like he's a Selkie guy. He's always going to be probably a hundred point guy um feeding like the superstar on the first line so you know does Matthews need Marner to score that many goals I don't know um maybe that's probably the the last thing standing for Shanny and the the management to let go on him but if you want to stockpile your defense and take a serious cup run here you've got the pieces around you know Matthews and Nylander I look at Marner as a guy that's um his 10 million or 11 almost 11 million contract could be shipped out for two two big names um defensemen whatever uh and if I'm even looking at the Sharks like Ferraro and Vlasic I don't think Vlasic would ever probably take a trade unless he could win a Stanley Cup he's a loyal shark and like I said his jersey will get retired but I don't know I mean he's good on a good team like I don't think any defenseman looks really good in San Jose and the goalies are amazing. Their save percentage, they're just getting like 50, 60 shots a night. So how do you look good as a defenseman or or a goalie in that kind of uh, team where they're clearly uh, positioned to tank for Celebrini? So I think, um, it, you know, if the Sharks manage to win the draft lottery and get Celebrini, like I could see uh, some kind of blockbuster move like signing Willie Nylander to 10 to 12 million in the summer. That's an eat kind of contract, but you got a lot of young kids around that are coming up and, you know, you can ride the wave with Nylander for seven years and rebuild your entire franchise around like Celebrini and these other guys when they're ready to jump. Maybe, you know, then you have like a core situation like uh, the Toronto's had for these last um, three to four years as these guys have hit their prime. So that's it for today. Take care, everybody.